previous videos, we have talked a bit about um, what the structure of an argument is. We have talked about the issue of validity and soundness of an argument. And finally, about the question of hidden premises. At this point, you might ask yourself, what does it have to do with data and data interpretation? So, in this video, I will provide an example I've encountered myself a while ago. I was arguing with relatives over the efficiency of an expensive apparatus that emits waves of a certain wavelength in order to treat, let's say, recurring headaches. I'll just change the name of the product a bit in order to avoid being sued. We'll call it Fast Helator 2000. So basically, um, you, the, let's say there was an experiment to assess the efficiency of this apparatus with one group of uh, people that were given the fast letter and the other one uh, that was uh, not treated. And we assume that both were suffering at the beginning from recurring headaches. And we notice uh, that uh, among the group who had the fast letter 2000, uh, like headaches decreased by a significant amount. So the argument is as follows. A controlled experiment that included a control group which was not exposed to any treatment and a test group with the treatment facilitator has shown a 37%, more or less 12% reduction of headache pain among subjects that use the facilitator. So here you have the description of the result of the experiment. So now the conclusion of the argument is as follows. Therefore, the waves emitted by the apparatus have the capacity to relieve the pain. We will assume here that, surprisingly, the data are actually reliable in the sense that a proper scale was used to measure headaches. Still, there's a problem with that argument. Can you identify it? Firstly, there's a hidden premise, a suppressed premise. The person who made this argument assumed that the only reason why headache pain can be relieved is because of the waves emitted by the apparatus. So, if we decompose the full argument, it goes that way. A controlled experiment that included a control group and a test group, blah, 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 has shown a 37% reduction of headache pain among subjects that use the fast data 2000. Then you have the hidden premise. If the apparatus relieves headaches pain, then it means that the waves it emits have a healing power. And the conclusion? Therefore, the waves it emits have a healing power. Technically speaking, the argument is valid. However, the argument is not sound, because the hidden premise is not true. Indeed, the person who designed the argument forgot about the placebo effect. The mere fact that people are exposed to a treatment may have an influence on the perception of pain. They may feel better, not because of the product, because, but just because they are being taken of, uh, care of. If you do not rule out the placebo effect first, explaining your results with physics, with the impact of waste on human cells and or whatnot, is perfectly irrelevant. So I hope you will remember that. Always look look out for invalid hidden premises, or uh, for untrue hidden premises, I should say, when you have the feeling your interlocutor is jumping to conclusions. By the way, in order to control for the placebo effect, you would need to expose both groups, the experimental and the control group, to the apparatus. Some apparatus would actually be emitting waves, and some would not. And both the scientists and the subjects should ignore which devices do emit and which do not. It is called a double blind. If even after that you get similar results, then yes, you may have made a groundbreaking discovery. But trust me, it is unlikely to happen. 